everyone. I'm in the room next to the main lab right now getting supplies for the blood feed because it is a Tuesday. So you'll need a plastic bin, two long pieces of tubing. They're pretty long, like a foot and a half, two feet maybe. Over here, you'll need two glass crucibles. I like to use the tall ones. I like to make sure that they have the same bottom. Some of them have wider rims at the bottom. those in your basket you need a piece of small tubing I find the smaller the better that's my preference I like them to be close together so this one or maybe even a little bit smaller and then we go into the main lab to get the rest of our stuff two squares of parafilm and the blood. We keep the blood in this fridge. We always keep it in the middle rack. It's always labeled. The Linus lab labels it for the Lindner lab and with the date, don't ever use blood that's more than a month old. It's the 18th right now. So this one is still good. That's our current aliquot. We normally have up to 30 mils and you use like two mils at a time. So once you have your two glass crucibles and your parafilm squares, you attach them to the bottom of the crucible. Um, and to do that, I have a like pretty specific method that works pretty well every time so that the parafilm isn't so thin that it breaks, but isn't so thick that the mosquitoes can't get to the blood. So you have your square. I grab both sides like this, pull, and then you just flip it and then pull again so that the part of the middle is stretched out. So then you just stick it on. And I like to pull it at all the edges so that it doesn't have too many wrinkles and is like a pretty clean piece of parafilm for them to poke into like that. And then you wanna seal all the edges by pressing the outside down. Make sure this is a good seal because if it leaks nine times out of 10, it leaks from somewhere along this edge and not from them poking it so much they break it. And then I go around the edge of the rim at the top and press that down too, so that by the end, you can see it has a good seal and nothing's gonna get out. And then you repeat that process. So again, pull once, pull again, Stick one side down and then flatten it out. All right, and then seal it. And when we get into the conviron, I always double check the seal and press it down again in both places just to make sure it doesn't leak because it really sucks to have to take the whole blood feed apparatus apart and redo it part way through. So once you're in the confinement, you grab your cage, make sure all the petri dishes in it are closed. You set the water back to 39 degrees so that the water heats up to keep the blood warm for them. Always invert the blood a few times to mix it because it is whole blood so it does separate. And then you take one long tube and you put it into one of the pumps. I like to pull on the top of it to make sure it's in snugly. Then you take your other tube, put it in the water at the bottom of the water bath, and then put the lid down to secure them. Again, check the seal to make sure everything is pressed down enough. Then you just hook 
see that they're feeding well, and you can tell that by red blood droplets at the bottom of their cage on the paper towel. And if it looks okay, then I add about two more mils of blood and then let them sit for an hour. Okay, so when the blood feed is done, this is what it will look like. You can see the blood at the bottom, meaning that they fed well. So when you're ready to take it apart, I unplug the cup first. And then I unplug this tube from the pump so that the water will drain through it and back into there so that you don't have water all over the water. And then you just take all the plastic tubing pieces off of these, put everything back in the bin and take it back to the room and make a 10% bleach solution. I just fill the bottom so that there's a layer of bleach and then I fill water up to this line and then let that sit overnight.